Hi everyone, my name is Francis Jiahui Lin. <coughs> Today I'm going to present a paper entitled Unfolding the Phone from Within, <coughs> a, a post-colonial discourse on contemporary Asia's spatial displayness. This paper examines the built environment in contemporary Asia from a post-colonial perspective. As a methodological design, the notion of displayness which emphasizes the internal form of display is used to analyze the built environment in contemporary Asia, in which the visual and formalistic representation has conspicuous impact from external cultural political forces. In this sense, the display identity construction of the built environment in contemporary Asia can show absence of her past and possible future into the present. It is my argument that the notion of the displayness suggests the critical dynamics that is able to unfold this identity dilemma, which is trapped into a binary approach that only sees architecture and urbanism from either genius loci or zeitgeist. This conventional but Eurocentric method explains architecture and urbanism mainly from a position of being the authorities all colonizers' position in a relationship of dominance to suggest the identification of a place at a certain moment. However, this approach reveals in a state of problematic, which is uh, um, when it is applied to an ancient built context, which her post colonial condition suggests various processes of cultural political hybridization. This problematic situation happens when an intersubjective form of an antinomy is detected from the display of Asia's speciality. The commercial exhibitions temporarily built along or within major shopping areas in Asian cities can be the simplest of such antinomic phenomena. Normally, these commercial spaces are placed as forms of dynamic anxieties and conflicts that in the end would come towards stability. The anxieties refer to the worship and mimicry of the globalist fashion, and the conflicts illustrate the absence of such fashion domestically in the context of Asia. These two concerns suggest the admittance to the impact from globalization and the imagery states as being exotic while these commercial spaces are continuously built and rebuilt. It is, however, my argument that these spaces identify in the post-colonial sense flowing and complicated phenomena and can be regarded as the registered historicity of contemporary Asia. In order to elaborate this argumentation, in this paper I analyze particular cases of temporary built objects which reflect the economic po political intervention into the Asian built environment, both as lemmas and from the collective sense of urbanism. These empirical cases are strategically uh, selected from Singapore and Taiwan, and the discussion is unfolded in terms of representation, epistemology, and power knowledge formation. In museological terms, display is a notion that integrates spectacle and exhibition. As a sign, let's showcase certain issues. Spectacle represents more to the cinephile, which is the form of the sense, whereas exhibition has the implication towards the cinephile, which indicates the meaning. Display, however, suggests both as it underscores both instrumentality and ideology. Provided by Alice Virtual, the definition of display registers an intention of not only presenting objects to the reviewers, but also a rising interest from the object that attracts viewers' attention. That is to say, these terms share a similar context, literally but different degrees, involved in the fact of showcase. This study extends the idea of display and uses the term displayness to highlight the quality of display in a particular time-space situation of Asia. Of course, 
The notion of this Venus shares the basic premises of noticeable, noticeable display by its dense implication to a broader context of architectural urbanism. As Berchel suggests, the premises at least should include one, the attraction of viewers' interest in the targeted object, two, the authority of the targeted object's authenticity, three, the providence of the targeted object's value, and four, a consensual form of reception in showing the targeted object. It is my argument that this plainness resists the implication of implication to characterize Asian architectural herbalism. Contemporary Asia observed from the view environment has registered a postcolonial concern with the subject position when architecture is regarded as a form of historicity. In recent decades, the rise of Asia <coughs> has been phenomenal, which are political, economic, and cultural involvement in the worldwide context share the critical inquiry into the uh, cultural political analysis of colonialism since colonial regimes began to topple after World War II. As a particular part that identifies Asia, this postcoloniality is both a subject matter and a theoretical framework. That is to say, the rise of Asia emphasizes not only the change of subject position of Asia from the otherness to selfness, that suggests a noticeable process of subjectivation, but also how the notion of Asia performs in a relationship of dominance to suggest a border interplay <coughs> between <coughs> control over and resistance. In the former instance, the post-colonial condition of contemporary Asia is clear. The subjectification implies an Asian-centered discourse against Eurocentrism and universalization. In the latter instance, however, um, the post-colonial condition becomes subtle and sometimes antinomic. That is to say, Asia today, through the post-colonial condition, is characterized by playing both a role of general, generalizing resistance against the former and external Western forces, colonization and the role of the opposite. However, this deduction that binarily dis divides the text in an Asia context into two parts, which echoes Edward Said in the notion of Orientalism, sorting sceneries um, clearly into the side of the colonizer or the side of the colonized becomes problematic. The Dutch artist Florentine um, Hoffman's rubber duck urban installation art, which was displayed in the Kaohsiung Harbor in Taiwan in 2014, can be an example that both the internationalism and the highlight of Kaohsiung's maritime regional character play the role of the colonizer in different hierarchical positions. And visually, the subject Kaohsiung is ideologically absent and becomes problematic if it is identified as a colonized. As Homi Baba suggests, colonial mimicry is the desire for a reform recognizable other as a subject of difference that is almost the same but not quite. The act of mimicry actually creates a new cultural identity which belongs un neither to the side of the colonized nor to the colonized. Hybrid is an inevitable scenario once two different cultural forces encounter in one same context. And mimicry is an ad that Baba inspired by Ashishnandi's notion of the colonial culture that is reciprocally formed through a process of ideological signature and regulating learning argues one possible key change during the process of hybridization. In this sense, 
the registration of modality is converted into colonial modality that can be considered as a form of repositioning the subject of Asia. And the use of regional view tradition is also converted as an amendment a gesture of um, displaying this repositioned subject construction. In recent years, there is a type of the temporary commercial exhibition which has been popular amongst the good variety of commercial brands across areas of high-end products, popular culture, and fashionable products, as well as quotidian necessities. This type of the commercial exhibition arguably was led by the showcase of uh, the Apple com company's flagship stores across the world. The exhibition itself hence does not showcases um, by the building itself but converts the building into a transparent container that um, com uh, combinates the selling products inside as the subject. This type of commercial exhibition which uses this strategy when it is mimicked and placed temporarily in an Asian context, however, demonstrates a hint at contemporary Asian metropolitan architectures, mediation between anxiety about um, identity construction and the impact from external cultural political forces. It is my argument that contemporary Asian architecture represents a space that a good variety of architectural ideas are placed together, heterogonically showing the multiplicity of contemporary Asia's postcoloniality. Now, as simply as the idea of eclecticism suggests in the broader context of architecture, the intermarriage amongst the different architectural thoughts that reflects in contemporary Asian architecture, I argue, has involved complicated post-colonial hybridization, which can be physically re resorted in different degrees. Taking the typology of shopping center as the example, the stylistic representation often is clearly internationalist or revivalist. The intention of emphasizing a certain cultural essence or the globalist trend is clear. The temporary um, commercial exhibitions in which the construction usually are located in the front plaza or the central atrium become the foreground of this built complexity. The exhibitions that borrow a simplistic form suggested by the Apple flagship store hence become a form of heterotopia that reflects and mediates the identity struggle and the comp competition with the global fashion. The cases in Singapore and Taiwan, where the location of two branded um, and temporary commercial exhibitions are in front of non-shopping centers in the most popular sh shopping district. In Singapore, the Ultra Road area, and in Taiwan, the east area of Taipei City. Both show a clear contrast in style, either between a postmodern revivalist form and a sim simplest form, or between an internationalist form and an icon iconic branded image. In either case, the temporary constructions utilizes the ideology of instrumentality and the brand image to highlight the space rather than any further architecture members. The view imagery is seemingly neutral when compared to the complicated background and the combination of the two can be regarded as a decorated shade argued by Robert Venturi. The only difference is that the pure and geometric build mass in the contemporary Asian cases represents the frontality. Venturi argued that in the postmodernist manner, 
science and deco can be aided to denote the purpose of architecture, whereas I argue these commercial exhibitions are aided in a post-colonial manner to bracket um, the historicity. The historicity of Asia is normally complicated and unclear when it is examined by view of Western intellectualism. That does not exactly fit into the Asian scenarios. The bracketing phenomenon, however, helps unveil the surface complexity and reveal the essence. The special displayness implied by <clears throat> the temporary commercial exhibitions hence suggests the registration of Asia's historicity in different loca localities. This specific um, um, typology here is used to open thinking to a much broader set of issues which identifies the historical tension produced by Western intervention historically in Asia to deconstruct the duality, contradictions, complexities, and a potential hybridity between Western notions of space and those of Asia. Most importantly, um, the, the post-colonial perspective suggested by the explanation provides alternative and useful insight in mapping Asia's um, cultural political identity, which the current state still shows an ongoing and floating status. Here, I strategically <coughs> select two cases, Singapore and Taiwan, to further elaborate the idea of registered historicity. The notion of historicity, in a simpler way, um, refers to the present representation of authenticity, the historicity observed from different geographic entities, therefore hints at the essential composition that comprises the variety of identity construction. In Singapore, as a city-state, the density of her population and the limited space are the premises that the Singaporean built environment is conditioned as a top-down strategy, a void philosophy has been an act to reify um, the open market economy and demands not only special transparency but also special um, flexibility. In this sense, a neutral void which is flexible in different time on different occasions to provide multifunctional and multicultural activities to happen implies the basic historicity that temporary commercial exhibitions are observed in Singapore. The promontory at Marina Bay, for example, is one of the city state's favorite outdoor sites as it is located in the heart of Singapore's prosperous financial hub and is surrounded by water and gardens. This site is Greenfield, a greenfield open to the public as a public function, as a, a basic function, whereas it is often used as a site for temporary commercial exhibitions such as the carnival for festival occasions. The special displayness created by these temporary exhibitions and the character of the site even though these visions are varied in terms of purposes and contents, has echoed the void philosophy as the city-state's post-colonial historicity that strives for being sustainable in the context of the inevitable open market environment. To a certain extent, this seemingly neutral imagery of being voided shows a unique construction of Singapore's contemporary representation of nation building. Taiwan's current state of her cultural politics in space, when compared to the historicity shown in Singapore, is characterized by a form of in betweenness due to the odious cultural political competition with China. This situation, as a representation of Taiwan's special post coloniality, has caused a colonic struggle 
with island construction. In addition, very similar to Singapore, which geographically is independent and individual, yet cultural racially implies a multiplicity. Taiwan's nation building through architecture is always veiled by a good variety of impacting issues, such as the post-colonial modernity brought externally from the imperial period to the present globalist age, and often display images of either internationalism or instrumentalism. The high-speed rail um, st spec station in Kaohsiung is one conspicuous example that a building becomes a landmark and helps identify the locality of the adjacent neighborhood because of the resistant image of technology and instrumentality to the building. The temporary commercial exhibitions displayed inside the waiting hall, interestingly, become the main source that station can be culturally traced. These commercial exhibitions similarly adopt a simple, temporary, and transparent build form, but the software they installed into the constructions becomes very stunning um, in terms of the implied senses of tradition, culture, and humanism. Arguably, to a certain extent, it is due to the commercial exhibitions, the view of the station from the waiting hall is differentiated from those known high-speed rail stations met in Europe. Through um, the cases analyzed above, above within an Asian urban context, it is my argument that the, the built environment in Asia today has implied a unique sign of urbanism that can be regarded as the Asian displayness. The sign of Asia arguably is enlarged and has become increasingly noticeable due to the representation of its implied form and meaning. As a semiotic idea, um, Saussure proposed a way of unfolding sign to be more understandable in two sides, one is called the cinefer and the other is called the cinefied. According to Saussure, the cinefer refers to the some image of a sign, whereas the signify alludes to the concept of sign. The sun image is surface and visible. It does suggest the external appearance of a sign, while the concept is internal and abstract. It hence hints at the meaning of a sign. That is to say, the Asian discipline showcases a form of Asia both from her external experience and internal essence. The appearance usually is visible and more approachable, whereas the sense is considered being more authentic and reflecting more meaningful of the entity, although it has commonly the difficulty of decoding its register abstractness. However, As a methodological design, a discursive perspective made from a comparative examination of Asia's built environment and her post-colonial condition is argued here as a strategy that is able to trace the internal essence of the Asian displayness and further to regard it as a form from within. The implied Asian displayness hence suggests two indicators that meaningfully help identify the built environment in Asia, especially within the metropolitan areas. First, um, through the symbolistic and transparent spatial definition of this vision, the surroundings which um, comprise complicated built elements and with high reception of architectural styles, they are entitled to um, be Asian can be integrated and be associated with a center. The center does not tangible but ideological. Most importantly, the center provides an approachable space that these Asian um, elements to be placed and sorted out without being um, misunderstood as disorder. Second, through the direct mimicry of the exhibitions from the native imagery, 
the visual surface that reflects the impact from the internationalism and Western intellectualism can be mediated and deconstructed to a relocation of its implied cultural political location. The notion of Asian hence started to be meaningful and indicative rather than being as a super of a superficial umbrella term. This Asian displayness argued in this paper exemplified the temporary commercial exhibitions as one visual representation, therefore functions as a form of mediation that communicates um, and articulates a good variety of Asia's visual view representations, which cannot and fail to be comprehended by a dominant but Western-oriented epistemological system. The Asian displayness suggests an abstract and untouchable form coming from the essence of architecture, which regulates the understanding of contemporary Asian built environment and is showcased to the general public ideologically rather than physically. In a different context, of the power and knowledge interaction, the Asian displayness implied by these commercial exhibitions and constructions <laughs> register a sense of intersubjectivity. Let me show Foucault argued in Discipline and Punish. Foucault argues that, exemplified by the Panopticon, the idea of spectacle can be subjective to an ideology of surveillance. In the case of contemporary Asia's special displayness, the spectacle of the Temporary commercial exhibitions also is suggestive to an ideology of surveillance. This sense of surveillance is formed by the seemingly neutral transparency of these exhibitions. This form from within implies it's able to bracket the complicated and veiled representation of meditating, mediating um, anxiety about um, uh, identity construction and the competition follows the internationalist view fashion. As a conclusion and central argument of this paper, this international and abstract um, but pure form suggested by um, the temporary commercial exhibitions help further unfold the understanding of current state of Asian architecture's contemporary identification process, which often is misunderstood by essentially its original and yet untheorized form of culture. And this is my presentation. Thank you very much.